Take a look at this raw file. The sky is looking beautiful and well exposed, but the subject on the right side is super dark and we can't spot many details. This creates an unfortunate exposure imbalance between these two areas. So let me show you how we can fix that in Lightroom. Feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. Since we're dealing with a very dark subject, the first guess would be to go into the basic panel and simply raise the exposure. But since the sky of this scene is already looking pretty good, if we bring up the global exposure slider like this, we will get back details from the subject in the foreground, but the sky and also the water surface down below just gets uglier and overexposed in certain areas. So that's really not what we want to do. So let's reset the exposure. Since the sky is made up of a lot of brighter tones, what we can try to do within the basic panel is to bring up the shadows very gently, just pushing out some more detail little by little. So really don't overdo it. We want to change things with tiny adjustments. We can not only use the shadows, but we can also use the blacks for the same effect. So as I bring up the blacks, you can see these elements in the foreground getting more and more details this way. Again, I don't want to raise the blacks too much, so let's tone it down just a little like that because I want to target these areas later on and get out much more details from those spots. What I want to do in the basic panel first, however, is I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, which will help bring up the base saturation. And I also want to adjust the white balance. I think this whole shot is a little too cold, so I'm going to slightly bump up the temperature, introducing some more warmer tones. Also, I'm going to slightly raise the vibrance to boost the color some more. And then let's bring up the texture, giving this whole shot a little more sharpness this way. And at the same time, I'm going to apply a soft, dreamy look by bringing down the clarity a notch like this. That's about it for the basic adjustments. We can already take a look comparing the two images. On the left side, we have the raw file with a super dark foreground. And on the right side, after the basic adjustments, you can already see much more details in those deeper shadows of the foreground. But now we are going to use masks and we are going to further target these specific areas and get out more details, balancing the exposure of the scene. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. And all we need to do in here is to click on subject to create a subject mask. As you can see, this works quite good. So what I want to do for this part of the image is I want to bring up the exposure. Again, I'm only using tiny adjustments because if you go too crazy, it's easily overdone. So always be careful with these adjustments. Besides the exposure, we can of course also use the other sliders down below. So I want to bring up the shadows even more. And since we're only targeting this very specific area, you see how we can nicely balance the exposure between sky and subject. Let me also raise the blacks somewhere like this. And I'm going to bring up the whites, which will push the highlights of the subject in the foreground. And in turn, we just get a little more contrast in here. Okay, now after adjusting the subject like this with this mask, everything looks a little bit too cold. But there's an easy way to fix that since we also have the white balance adjustments within this mask. So all we need to do is to bring up the temperature to fix that cold color cast. So I would say this is looking pretty good. And there's one more thing I want to do. Let's go down into the effects panel. And I just want to introduce a little bit of clarity on that area. So let's bring up the clarity, just giving this part of the image a little more punch. And now let me turn off this single mask to see the difference from before with a very dark underexposed subject to after. Now the balance between sky and this part of the image looks much, much better. But since we have created this mask, this leads to another problem with that tree line in the back being too dark now. And it, it's kind of distracting. So let me create a new mask. I'm going to choose a luminance range mask because this is pretty much one single dark blob. So I just need to click on here and this gets us a pretty good selection. Of course, not perfect, but we can modify that. I'm going to click on those three dots, choose intersect mask width and choose brush. 
And with the brush, I'm just brushing over this dark part I want to change very roughly like this. All right. And in here, all I need to do is to bring up the exposure. I want to get the brightness closer to our subject on the right side. So something around this looks pretty good. I'm also going to bring up the shadows very gently. But right around here, I think it's perfect. Now things are looking really, really good so far, but of course we can always do a little more. So what I want to do next, let me create a new mask. I'm going to choose a select objects mask and here make sure to use the rectangle select mode because this will just give you better results. And with that objects mask, we can target certain things. What I want to do is to target the bright side of this house right here. I'm going to draw a rectangle around this side like that. Lightroom is doing an okay job of selecting it, but of course it's selecting a little too much. We need to again clean up the selection. Let me hold down the spacebar and click in here so we can zoom in. I'm going to subtract and I'm going to choose a brush. Make sure to set the feather to down to zero so we get a brush with a hard edge. And I basically we only want to target the the yellow color of that house. I'm going to subtract everything else. I'm clicking right in here once. Then I'm holding down the shift key and I go along this edge all the way to the end right here. Again, holding down the shift key and mouse click. And this will create a nice straight line from one point of the brush to another. And I'm doing the same right here. Click once, bring the mouse down and click another time down below. And there we have a perfect selection for this house side. What I'm going to do is to add a little more brightness, giving this whole scene a little more depth this way. I'm going to bring up the exposure, making this side of the house brighter. And I also want to increase the temperature because this side of the house is getting hit by the sunlight. So it's supposed to be a bit warmer, just like this. Beautiful. And I want to do the same thing for this white house right here on the right on the left side. So let's again zoom in. I'm holding down the space bar and click in here. I'm going to use a color range mask this time and I'm going to click right in here, right out of the gate. It will select more than needed. So I'm going to dial down the refine slider, hoping we can target this wall in a better way. We cannot, but that's not a big deal. Again, I'm going to click on those three dots, go to intersect mask with and choose the brush. And then let me again bring down the feather all the way. And I'm just going to manually select this part of the image. Again, holding down the shift key to create these lines. I don't think it needs to be perfect. So I'm just doing it very roughly like this. Okay, and again, I'm going to bring up the exposure to make it brighter. I'm going to even bring up the whites for further brightness. And again, I'm increasing the temperature just so the color is fitting better for the sunset. All right, beautiful. Now the whole image looks much better. I can already deactivate the masks so you can see the difference from before to after. Looks much more balanced. Now let's try to blend the sky a little better with the foreground. For that, I'm using a radial gradient with which I'm going to create a glow effect. And I want this glow effect to be overlapping the brightest parts of the sky right here. I'm making sure this, uh, the center of this radial gradient lies outside of the image to get a more natural effect. And I'm going to overlap the subject like this. So the glow is kind of spilling over the buildings on the left, on the right side. For the glow, I'm going to first make this area brighter. So I'm going to bring up the exposure. Just need to be careful to not introduce any clipping, but I think that looks fine. Now for the glow effect itself, I'm going to bring up the blacks. Just like that. And to make the glow effect even more intense, I'm going to use negative dehaze. So let's bring that down right here. That is looking beautiful. Because of these adjustments, we start to lose a little color and a little saturation in this area, which I really don't want. So I'm going to bring back color by bringing up the temperature. And I'm even going to add a specific color tone to this spot using this little color box right here. So let's click on it. And I'm going to set up the hue. I'm aiming for an orange tone. So somewhere like here, and I'm going to 
really pump up the saturation, making this color more intense within this area. Beautiful. I want to further improve this glow effect. I'm going to use another radial gradient for that. This time I'm making it slightly smaller, but again, I'm going to place the center outside of the image and I'm going to place it over the brightest area here. Let's maybe make it a bit, a bit bigger. Then I'm going to bring up the exposure once more. All right, and I'm also going to bring up the blacks again. That's looking perfect. I do think the top part of the sky could be darker, so let me use a linear gradient to target this part right here. Of course, we don't want to affect the subject with its tower standing out like this. So I'm going to again intersect this mask, click on those three dots, intersect mask with and choose select sky. And in here, I just want to bring down the exposure a little bit, kind of adding this custom vignetting effect with the top of the image being a little bit darker. Then let me also work on the foreground. Again, I'm using a simple linear gradient, just covering the water surface right here. And I just want to make it a bit brighter by bringing up the exposure and the whites. And I could even add some texture to make the structure right here just a bit more visible. But that's it for the masking adjustments. Again, let me turn off all the masks so we can see the difference from before to after. Much, much better. And that's how we can fix an exposure imbalance like in this image, just with a few clicks. Now let's do a bit of color grading. Therefore, let's open up the color mixer. Here, I just want to work on the hue for a moment. I really don't like the blue tones in the sky. I want them to be a bit more cyan-ish. So I'm going to bring down the blue hue like this. I'm also going to raise the purple hue, which will make some of these clouds just look a bit warmer. And I want to bring down the yellow hue, giving the sky more of an orange color tone. And I'm also going to slightly drop the orange hue. Beautiful. Then of course we can use split toning to add a little more creative color grading here. And in here I'm starting with the highlights. For the highlights, the midtones and the global settings, I'm going to use a warm color tone. So let's set up the hue. I'm going with an orange color tone right around here. And let's bring up the saturation. I want, I want to raise it quite a bit to make this color really, really visible. I'm going to do the same for the midtones. So I'm aiming for the same color tone right around here. Let's bring up the saturation like this. Nice. Of course, we can keep a bit of color contrast and I usually do that through the shadows. Here, I'm going to set up the hue to a cold color tone and just gently bring up the saturation like this. Beautiful. Then we have the global color wheel left right here and I'm going to set up the hue. Again, I'm aiming for a warm color tone and I'm going to bring up the saturation just a little bit to get a bit more warmth introduced on this shot. All right, that's looking pretty good. One more thing I wanna do in the calibration tab here, just bring down the blue primary hue and bring up the saturation because I really love this effect. And finally, of course, the sharpening in the details panel. Let's do that. I'm going to bring down the radius all the way. I'm increasing the details all the way up. Then, of course, we wanna apply some masking. So hold down the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider. That's looking pretty good. And I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done editing this image. So if this video was useful for you and your images, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. I would gladly answer them. And thank you so much for watching this video.